So, hey, Omada heads, I'm Lucy and Omada is the law. Tonight, I will have the high honor to interview Daniel Nigel from Clouds. So, welcome, Daniel. Thanks for the interview. And my first question is, Sorrow Bound, a single was released during the Christmas holidays of last year as a present from the band uh, to the fans. So wh why have you chosen that date for the release and uh, how was the reaction of the fans in media to it? Well, first of all, Lucy, good evening and thank you very much for the opportunity of allowing me to say a few words about Clouds and about the music that we make. Um, to answer your question, Sorrowbound, yes, has been released on the 25th of December last year. Um, and that is literally just because we kind of got used to the fact that we are giving away a little bit of a present to the people that are listening to us. Um, we, we've never considered um, our fans as fans. We've actually considered them as friends. And in between friends, it's only nice that you offer something back to the friends that support you and the friends that help you yeah. being a band um for us in in clouds um we we have this we have this very kind approach to uh to our friends and as i said it's only nice to offer something back you know for all the support and help over the years and this has become a little bit of a tradition um and we'd like to keep that tradition ongoing so yes that that has been that has been the case for for sorrowbound as well um Sorrowbound also marks a little bit of um, a change in our sound. Um, not too much, I, I would say. Um, up until now, people were used to um, a particular style and, and the particular sound that we've had over a period of 10 years. Um, however, now we feel it, it's time for a little bit of a change and because everything is evolving um, people are evolving, music is progressing, and everything else around music is progressing. So we thought, okay, let's try it out and see what comes out. And the result has been overwhelming to all of us in the band. And we've decided, okay, this is what we're going to do, and this is going to be our line forward from now on. Um, and I'd like to believe that that was, that was, that was a good choice for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Desperate Tire uh, album was released in 2021 and was considered as somehow being better than the previous albums, as I read somewhere. And it show us the natural and high development of the band through the years. So which are your personal impressions about it? <laughs> First of all, I know it's a little bit of a mouthful to pronounce these, yeah. let's say, Romanian Romanian titles. Yes, we do have, or all our albums actually have Romanian titles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and yes, this this particular one has been has been a bit more personal than the others, and I would say that in regards to your question uh desportire has been has been sort of a milestone to what we have achieved so far if on the previous albums we've we've uh, we've tackled themes which are very very obvious to the doom metal circle um and to this particular niche on desportire we've actually explored a little bit more of our musicianship together um, I must I must say that this album has been a collective effort, okay, um, and that's because sometimes it just so happens that you know one person writes a lot more than someone else in, in the band, and you know brings up more ideas to the table, and those ideas actually conclude in being songs. But on this particular album, it, it was it was a collective effort, and and this is basically what we can do as a band. This mm -hmm. is how I like to see this album, um, and of course with with inviting um, some of some of Doom's finest voices like Aaron Stainthorpe from My Dying Bride and um, Mick Moss from Antimatter, you know that has been quite the highlight of our career. Um, and and I, I really believe that this album is pretty much, let's say, the peak of our musicianship. 
and it can only go straight forward to something much much better from here on forth um so that's why that's why i do consider um this particular album in in being let's say the maturity of the band and you know we would like to think that we age like a fine wine instead of like bad milk <laughs> so it's 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 only natural as i said in in the previous question you know everything progressive uh, progresses nowadays you know technology progresses mm -hmm. mentalities progress and and music progresses as well and so must we it's it's not it's not a tide to be honest with you it's not like riding a tide you know like surfing um and just going with the flow we have a very very definite idea about what our music means to us first of all and then what 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 it means to to the friends that are listening to us and luckily um obviously i'm not trying to make comparison right here but luckily mm -hmm. for us our our goals and our music and the way we perceive music coincides very well with what our friends believe when they listen to our music so this can only be good yeah so still speaking about this part here, uh, some special guests. Yes, you spoke a little bit about it, but anyway, I'm going to ask. Uh, so, so some special guests uh, brought their collaborations to the album. So Antimatter's Mick Moss, uh, Mike Moss on the track This Heart a Coughing and My Dying Bride's Aaron um, in both all our words, the pen is real. So how was work uh, with these two masters? first of all it, it's been a, it's been a dream come true yeah um i i must say that you know for aaron um the middleman was was actually sean their violinist uh myself and sean have collaborated together for an album um of one one of his side projects called ustkara ghost Mm -hmm. um it, it's something that you might be interested in um and and it's something to to really keep an eye on because it's 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 sort of doom but it's more towards doom death mm -hmm. um but me me and Sean actually have have um have kind of connected you know over the years and you know we, we've kept in in contact with with uh one another and I actually thought okay mm -hmm. let me ask Sean if he can put me in contact with Aaron my Dying Bride being being one of my favorite Doom bands, obviously, like many others. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he pulled some strings and, and he did speak to uh, to Aaron. Aaron came back to me and he said he was very happy to um, to participate on, on this particular song. Um, and exactly like in the case with Mick, um, I've, I've actually said to both, look, man, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do. So here's what. This is the song, and you do whatever you feel like doing. Um, with, with Mick, with with Mick, it was it was um, it was actually quite quite a funny story because at the time he he wasn't quite available to do more than a few lines. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, after his listen to the song, he said, "You know what, Daniel? I'm 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 very inspired, and I would like to do and try a little bit more." So his Mick, you know, trying to find time for for um for singing on on this particular song, and he ended up basically owning the song, you know, with just just a few lines from myself. And this 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 was this was incredible, you know. He he came back. He, we went back and forth, back and forth. He tried a few things. He tried various things, and he kept sending me, um, you know, the results, you know, in his recordings and. I was just saying, you know what, man, just just take whatever you want and do whatever you want because this <laughs> song is completely yours. And yes, the um, the experience, just like with with all our other um, guests on on our music, was was literally overwhelming. You know, I'm 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 personally not the type of person who would limit a musician to. You know, mm -hmm. just do this, okay, and it's going to be fine. No, e even in the band right now, with the lineup that we have right now, I'm mm -hmm. I'm not going to limit anyone. So if I'm bringing an idea to the table, I'm obviously telling people, you know what, take this song and make it yours because this is what you do. You're a musician. You have that's, inspiration. That's Maybe you listen to it. Yeah, and 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 that was the case with with both Aaron and Mick. So. Yes, I'm. I'm truthfully thankful for for these collaborations. Yeah. 
Good. Um, some new gigs are scheduled uh, according to some posts of the band's page on social media. So would you like to share uh, then with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we have a few gigs. Um, what we've turned into a mini tour in Romania mm -hmm. with some very special guests. Um, and that would be Ivadni from, uh, from Spain. Um, I myself playing in other bands and having played in other bands meant that I, um, I've actually met a lot of people and a lot of musicians and I've seen a lot of very cool bands. And to be perfectly honest with you, Ivadni are literally in in my personal humble opinion um a band that work their asses off they put so much work into what they do and mm -hmm. i appreciate that very much plus the quality of the music is literally nothing short of amazing so yep. um we've been talking you know through the years and every single time we've been uh, we've been meeting each other you know at, at various gigs or or festivals and so on and um it, it seems that now was the right time to actually invite them to come over to romania and have a few shows um together also we will be having um two of our uh, clouds members other band called machiavellian god um these these uh, these boys are extremely talented and they they make some of the finest melodic death metal music that i've personally heard obviously you know i'm not just saying this because they are my band members you know two of them are actually my band members but because I believe I strongly believe in their music and their ability to raise the crowd and to present something that is quite unbelievably musically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, these shows will be will be only three for now, and they will be in three of Romania's major cities: um, one in Bucharest, one in Cluj, and one in Timisoara. And that's the western side of the country and the north side of the country. Okay. Um, obviously, obviously, these these shows are um, are made by our very good friend in Final Step Productions, mm -hmm. um, and they're helping us with um, producing um, the uh, the lineup and making sure the production, as in backline and accommodation and travel, are met easily, and we have no problems at all. And I can say that right now. Once the gigs have been announced, you know, there's there's been quite a lot of interest for for these shows. Um, and, and I'm very happy to be perfectly honest with you, because Clouds hasn't played in any other part of Romania apart from two locations. Yeah. One of them mm -hmm. being the very first show we've ever had. And that was 10 years ago. And that was in the Alba Iulia Fortress, somewhere in the north of the country. Mm -hmm. um, and the festival is called Dark Bombastic Evening. It, it's a fantastic festival. You yourself, you might be well interested in this particular festival because only exclusive bands are playing, um, you know, bands, bands, bands like, um, um, off, off the top of my head right now, Shape of Despair and Skepticism and Pantheist and so on. Wow. All, 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 of, all of these bands are actually, are actually brought as a premiere in mm -hmm. Romania. And and it's it's absolutely beautiful. So this is what we had our first show, and um, apart from Bucharest, we've we've not played in in uh, in Romania at all. Oh, myself wow. and the other guys being Romanian, um, but obviously this has something to do with the fact that I've been spending quite a lot of time in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. Hence the horrible accent that you hear right now, <laughs> for which I apologise. Um, but yes, apart from these two locations, we haven't played in Romania and it's about time we've actually done this. And I'm yeah. very, very happy we, we are actually able to do this right now. Yeah. Okay. Sounds incredible. Oh, uh, it is. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a pity that I'm a little bit far from you. Uh, okay. Uh, so... You have uh, an incredible and vast career as a musician, including uh, many successful bands on your journey. Some of them as uh, Pente's Eye of Solitude and Igonian Sorrow. So you have recently recently releases from another two bands, which are Dias, wonderful by the way. <laughs> and Thank you very much. <laughs> Draw the Sea. So could you share... Um, with uh, with us, 
the releases or plans or what's going on with these uh, two bands? Yes, absolutely. Um, Darius started as as a solo project. Um, and at some point, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've actually thought to myself, why not turn it into a live band? And so it happened, again, with the help of three of my colleagues in Eye of Solitude. Um, and uh, actually four. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, fourth. <laughs> yeah, e exactly. Sorry. Yeah. An another, yeah an another four. Another four of, of my colleagues in Eye of in, in, uh, in Clouds. Um, and we've turned this into a live band. Obviously, the focus is there because we, we are preparing to um, um, to record uh, our our second album with with Dius. Oh, okay. Um, and you know it, it's going incredible because again, you know, this is a collective effort. You know, everyone brings something to the table, and everyone is is bringing wonderful ideas. More to the fact that Dius is actually something that has deep roots in the Romanian folklore. Mm -hmm. um, we have we have special instruments, you know, like flutes and pipes, and um, you know, even a mouth harp, yeah, you know, okay. and and uh, bagpipes and all sorts of vocals, you know, from from those DSBM vocals to very shouted and very angry sort of vocals. Dius is is something that you know that that we we all enjoy. Um, and and it's it's something that we are trying to focus on, but it's 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 not kind of the main focus. You know, we we just go with the flow, and whenever we have time for dives, then we do something, whether it be shows or singles or an album, like like we are doing right now. Okay. Um, so yes, this this is something that I'm that I'm extremely happy about. You know, it, it's it's something that keeps us entertained and kind of takes away the let's say the the primary focus of, of clouds you know mm -hmm. being black metal and being something totally opposite to clouds clouds being something a bit more slow as in doomy paste and all that stuff yeah we jump to tempos like 200 210 bpm and we just go completely crazy so it's 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 very good fun first of all and secondly it's something that we believe it's quite authentic even though the music is not original i mean nowadays nothing's original anymore um yeah. we, we can't say that yeah. yeah we make original music and so on and so forth you know but it's something that we make with a lot of pleasure and a lot of dedication ground the sea on on the other hand is is something that i've focused on um a little bit more to be honest with you um in Drown the Sea, I've, I've, I've basically applied the formula that I've applied first for Clouds, and that would be having very good friends and musicians playing together in, in this particular band. So right now we have, we have members from Pilgrimage, from Malta. Um, we have, uh, we have um, our two guitarists. One of them is Artyom from uh, Woe Unto Me, the Belarus um, band, Doom Band. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, Sean from, from Pilgrimage. And then on the second guitar, we have Philippos from um, Ocean of Grief and on Thorn Zile. Um, we have our vocalist, Michu, who used to play with, uh, with Abigail and who is the man behind Final Step Productions, um, yeah. the company that's helping us with the tour. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we have, we have um, um, a brand new member. Um, her name is Delia. And she will be our keyboardist. Um, obviously, she has her own uh, um, her own side project, which is called Delatrix, and deals with like very nineties synth wave ambiental sort of music. Oh. So mm -hmm. I would say I would say it's 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 a band. It's not a superstar band, as a lot of people actually, you know, try to label uh, mm -hmm. international bands with members from from uh, from different bands. You know, yeah. I would say that this this is an international project a project that deals with very kind people and very hardworking people, and that's it. Because to be perfectly honest with you, I personally, if if, if you ask me to to put a nail in the wall, nine out of ten nails, I will I will completely them up. That's it. I don't know how to do anything else apart from doing music and being who I am and doing what I do right mm -hmm. some people will be will be very good carpenters some people will be very good painters and graphicians and and so on and so forth you know 
for me, it's, it's just music. This is all I've known for about 25 years, and that's pretty much all I can do. So, and you can do it. I might as well. <laughs> I, might, I might as well. Thank you. Thank you. You are way <laughs> too kind. I'm. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to to leave something behind. You know, whether it be mm -hmm. good or bad, this is the people's choice, and th this would be something that, you know, the people can actually judge for themselves. But luckily, so far with with Drown the Sea, it, even if we haven't presented any music yet, you know, the interest is quite big because oh, yeah, everyone sure. knows the bands. <laughs> Everyone knows the bands and everyone everyone knows what the musicians in those bands can actually achieve. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can say at this very moment, the debut album is ready. Um, uh. And right now we have only vocals to deal with and to record and mix and master. But we have some, some snippets uh, from the studio that we are very, very excited to show to people um, and, and see their reaction and... and you know, hear their reaction. I, I would say that Drown the Sea is is something a bit more, it is a bit more progressive. You know, it's not your traditional doom. It's very modern, but at the same yeah. time, it's very, very dark. It's very hopeless. There's not a gleam of hope well. that that interferes with the music. There's no, no way. This is going to be something that you should listen to next to a razor blade. <laughs> um and cool. that's that's pretty much it and that's pretty much it yes all right so many bands releases photography design dark art and tattoo artists as i uh i check it somewhere so um mm. all your talents are connected somehow of course but anyway how do you manage all these activities together i don't sleep <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's your secret. <laughs> um, I, I sleep very little, to be okay. perfectly honest with you. Okay. Um, it, it wouldn't be the main reason, no. Um, be, between between jobs and family and kids, mm -hmm. um, I personally don't know how to how to um, explain this. You know, somehow I, I I just find the time to do this. Um, for example, if, if I sit down at, at my computer and I'm grabbing my guitar or, you know, just playing around on the keyboards, you know, my mind is, is literally booming with ideas. Mm -hmm. I have five hard drives of five terabytes each, and they're all full of music, most of which has never seen the light of day, has never been released. It's just sitting there on, on my hard drives. Okay. Um, and that's that's again just just because I wouldn't know how to do anything else. Okay. All I know, all I know is how to be a father and how to be a, a good pillar for my family, and you know, make music, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'm I'm not very active, to be honest with you. I'm not very active on social media. I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm not going out much. I'm a bit of an introvert, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. But when I do go out, you know, it's going to be with with fine people and with people that I really do consider as friends. Um, but apart from this, it's it's literally just music all the time. That's yeah. pretty much it. Music mm -hmm. all the time, whether it's good or bad. Obviously, music that, that is on my hard drives, you know, I don't really consider it as being good enough to be released. You know, maybe one day I'll put it all up on the internet for people to download it. There's going to be 25 oh. terabytes of, of music. And you oh, know, wow. I'm just going to say, you know what, people just have it. <laughs> just you know, have I'm, I'm pretty, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. You know, so, some mm -hmm. of them are really good songs. You know, um, there will be different albums, you know, Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if, if, if I ever thought of a project, you know, and I've written a lot for it, then, you know, it, it's been one, two or maybe three albums of that particular kind. And then I've had other ideas and then I've started making another one, two, three albums for that particular idea. But as I said, you know, it's, 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 never, it's never seen the light of day. So I, I would say that, yeah, I, 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 I am a little bit of a hermit. <laughs> You know, a little bit of um, uh -huh. a loner when when it comes to these things, but 
you know, this this is this is all I like to do. You know, I just like to create. Whether I do terrible drawings or whether I write terrible poems or I make terrible music, this is what I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. So you play many instruments, but you share uh, I believe the both we both um ones that you are more uh I mean focused could be vocals and drums and which one of them do you identify yourself more and you have more pleasure to play? Drums. drums. Absolutely, drums. I, <laughs> I, I didn't even have to think about it for one second. No, drums, because this is what I've started with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't consider myself as being a vocalist. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a vocalist by chance and mm -hmm. by luck. That That's pretty much it. Um, and, and this all started um, not too long ago. I would say that I've actually um, started doing vocals somewhere in around maybe 2009. Mm -hmm. I would say that, you know, and, and that's not really a long time. I'm very self-conscious about my voice. Um, I try my very best, you know, but this th this this is something... You know, that comes comes directly from myself as being a very personal thing. You know, a lot of people have told me, oh, man, you have such a deep growl. You have a very good voice and so on and so forth. Yes. Um, a thing for, for which I am extremely grateful and thankful, um, you know, for, for having been told, you know, I have a decent voice. But where I feel the most comfortable is behind the drums, because this is what I started with. Okay. Before even yeah, before even thinking about doing any vocals at all, um, I was a drummer. I love this instrument. I spent thousands of euros on on drum kits and cymbals and gear for drums and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and I do not reg regret it for one single second. Okay. Not one single second. <laughs> Good. Uh, so, which are your main metal influences as a musician? Um, first of all, it would be it would be nature. I I love nature. Um, I've actually moved from the UK and I um, I settled in in a very small place in Romania, somewhere in the mountains, um, where we have minus twenty, minus twenty two, minus twenty three degrees. Um, right now, outside there are minus seventeen. Oh, well. um, so yes, this this is this is something that I completely adore. You know, being in the nature and and you know being in the forest and on the mountain. Um, it doesn't really matter where, as long as there aren't any people around. Mm -hmm. You know, this this is something that I, that I don't deal very well with. You know, and as I say, the very few people that I'm that I'm actually seeing, you know, are very very close friends who share the same passion for nature. You know, I actually believe that in in nature I find my biggest inspiration because it's it's something magical. You know, it's it's everywhere I go and everywhere I feel, you know, connected to to that particular place. You know, it gives mm -hmm. me gives me huge inspiration to write music, and it gives me inspiration to write all sorts of music. For example, you know, I I write music for DJs. I make mixes for DJs. You know, I write mm -hmm. techno music. I write trip hop. I write trap. I write pretty much all sorts of music. You know, and and all of this has to do with with nature first of all, and secondly, it would be other music. This is where I get my inspiration, and I'm not afraid to admit that I listen to a lot of music. Um, and the truth is, I I listen to very very little metal music. Yeah. When I'm trying to find my inspiration, I listen mm -hmm. to a lot of classical music. I am a huge fan of Sibelius, mm -hmm. the Finnish the Finnish composer and writer. Okay. Um, I, I I go towards I, I go more towards the underground side of classical music. You know, not not that I despise or or um, um, I'm, I'm putting aside you know classics you know like Beethoven, Schubert, Mozart, and so on and so forth. Um, but it's it's more the underground that attracts me. I listen to a lot of '90s pop music, for example. Again, one of my favorite bands is Depeche Mode and Roxette. Oh. That's it. I listen to a lot of <laughs> Phil Collins. I, I I love Phil Collins. I went to see him on his his um, his farewell tour, and I've, I've 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 had my mind blown. 
you know, like like mm-hmm. everyone else who is into this kind of music. So yes, I do listen to a lot of music, but it doesn't necessarily have to be metal. Metal. Mm-hmm. Um, although I listen to a lot of metal music as well. You know, whenever I'm working on graphics or whenever I'm tattooing or whenever I'm doing other stuff, I always listen to music. Um, and there are bands, um, you know, apart from the classical ones and apart from the you know all time favorites and classics. There are bands who really surprise me nowadays, you know, because as I said, everything progresses and and I'm very happy to see that everything is moving forward instead of stagnating. So yeah, this is this is I, I would say I would say that it's not an original point of view, but it's my point of view. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it, it's something that I'm that I'm not I'm not very keen into into saying, oh, I listen to only metal and this is where I get uh-huh. inspiration from, you know, slicing cats and drinking their blood and all that BS. <laughs> it's it's not it's not uh-huh. for me. Uh-huh. I'm forty I'm forty years old and you know, I've 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 passed that period of my life, you know, when I thought yeah. everything needs to be very dark. like yeah, true, true metal or oh, something yeah, like that. True. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, this this is where I get my inspiration from. From I, I would say nature and music, and I must complete this sentence because a lot of the day to day happenings, you know, the situations that you know, some something that is quite personal to me inspires me to write music. This is why I've started Clouds. Um, someone very very close to me from my family died of leukemia, and. Mm-hmm. It, I I personally couldn't let myself go. I, I I couldn't cry and I couldn't have closure. So instead of this, I went right home from the hospital and I wrote the very first song for Clouds. Oh. And only after that, I could literally cry like a baby and and let it all out. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, this this too. Yeah. There's there's a lot of inspiration in grief. There's a lot of inspiration in sadness. There's a lot of inspiration in yeah. loss. And especially for us in the doom metal niche, you know, I believe that this is this is a strong asset to be able to get inspired by something that has hurt you so bad. Yeah. Okay. 